How you doing? My name is Chris. Where are you from? From here in beautiful Okanagan, Kelowna. Been here for the past 10 years. What do you do for a living, Chris? I teach martial arts. Chris, I'm in Kelowna and I'm looking for a great place to eat fish. Um, do you have any recommendations? Oh, definitely. Lots of great spots in Kelowna, but because we're up here in Kell Valley, definitely the place to go, Summerhill. Great view, great food. Hi guys, Chef Jesse here at Summerhill Winery. Uh, welcome. Today we're going to be preparing some spring salmon from Skeena River with some of our garden vegetables that we just picked. Here's our spring fillet. It's huge, it's massive. And this is gonna be mine right here for today. Guys, this is, this is Eric von Krusig. He is our winemaker here at Summerhill and he makes some great stuff. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, it's great to be here this morning. I kinda live down in the basement, so. Cellar dweller. The cellar dweller, yes. Okay, so next up is uh, the potato salad portion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our lacinato kale, beautifully fresh, and we're just gonna take the rib out of the middle. We are going to do a thin cut on this kale. If you can't find kale, you can use, uh, you could use savoy cabbage or uh, a heartier lettuce would work just as well, like a frisee or something would work perfectly. And the next thing we're gonna add is going to be some blue potatoes. Blue potatoes are gonna get diced, nice and small. We're going to do the dressing next, which is just going to be a, one of the sprink, a sprinkle dressing, like I like to call it. Sprinkle it on top. So we start with salt, and then we're going to add Cabernet vinegar. If you wouldn't have Cabernet vinegar on hand, you could use red wine vinegar or an apple cider vinegar. Okay, and some organic uh, extra virgin olive oil, of course. Some Sultana raisins, just for a little punch. Today, uh, I'm using the stevia that we've just got out of the garden. So stevia is wonderfully sweet. Just cut it up nice and fine, and it'll lurk in the salad. Does so it need some time to integrate the flavor? Yeah, it just needs, it needs about 15 minutes or so. We're gonna do the sauce, which is called the beurre blanc, but today it's gonna be a beurre blush because of the purple ingredients in the dish. So, let's start off. We add our shallots, and this doesn't need to be hot on the stove, you can just, we're basically extracting uh, the goodies out of all this stuff at once. The purple basil, a little bit of lemon juice for uh, a little bit of kick, because like I said, there is fat, so we need acid to balance. We need balance in our food. And here we have some Pinot Gris, which is a, which is a dry, off dry, little dry, there we go. So it's dry. it's dry, okay. So we're gonna add that to the pot. Now let's just turn it on here in the stove. We'll get that heating up. So what we want to do is we want to reduce that wine by half, right on the dot. The amount of wine really varies about how much sauce you're going to make. All we really want to do is just cover the ingredients in the, in the pan or the pot with the wine. That should be enough. We're adding a little bit of, uh, of uh, coarsely cracked black pepper into here. So it looks like our, our, uh, our gastrique has reached the point where we're ready to incorporate or melt the fat in. So what we're going to do is we're going to, to move this off the heat. Uh, then we're gonna grab our butter. When the butter stops melting, it doesn't matter if you add too much butter, because it's only gonna melt to the point where their butter will melt. You need to use unsalted butter for this because you wanna be in control of how much salt is, is in the dish. You don't want the guy who's making the butter seasoning your dish. So the next step is just to strain it and pass it through a colander. And I just like to mash it a bit just to get a little bit of the cherry pulp and it helps to thicken the sauce a bit as well. So this is now gonna hold at, at room temperature. If it was to decrease in temperature, the butter would solidify, and if it was to elevate in temperature, uh, it would separate. So these are our dill seeds that I got from the garden. And then of course, we need salt and pepper. The style of uh, cooking that I'm gonna use today for this spring salmon is what I like to call inverted cooking, which means the salmon is never going to be flipped. And the reason why is the salmon is a very high fat salmon. Um, what we're gonna do is create a crust that's gonna start from here and end here as a very delicate. So we're gonna start in the pan, about a minute or two. You can turn it down to about a medium high once you reach the smoke point, just so you don't have any scorching. So at this point, we're going to put the salmon right into the oven and not ever flip it. The oven temperature today is 400 degrees. 
So it's fairly high heat. What I usually do is, as soon as the salmon goes firing into the oven, we begin the saute because as soon as the salmon's cooking, no one's waiting, right? So we're gonna start by adding um, our, uh, our radishes, our Easter egg radish. A couple of those. So next, I have our snap peas. And just let it do its thing on a, on a medium, medium high. Uh, we're just gonna add a little bit of wine. Last but not least, we're gonna add our squash blossoms. I just like to tear them in half, throw them in. And then one last little blast of salt and a little tiny bit of butter. Here's our garden veg saute. Okay, let's check our salmon. So let's have a look. So you wanna check the salmon. These little, this little white uh, bubbling, if you will, is an indication that the proteins are starting to coagulate. Um, and look, we don't have any wiggle. Right, when you push on it, it bounces back at you, which, is mean, which means the proteins have set up. And I think this is done. Um, it can just finish doing its thing in the pan until we plate it. Okay, so I was talking before about the crust. You see the crust, guys? Very, very almost crunchy on the top. And then it integrates through. And then the top is actually, it's actually been steamed by the, uh, by the liquid that's been uh, released in the salmon. And it's very, very delicate. So what I like to do, just so grab a, a tablespoon, put the, put the bottom of it on and just turn it inwards and then do a swoop like a Nike swoop, like this. So I like to gather up the squash blossoms. I like to situate them on top of the salmon, gather up some of the peas, put them near the bottom. You want to look as natural as possible here. So we got all different tones of purple, green, and orange. That's great. So there you have it, folks. So that's a beautiful chunk of salmon, Jesse. And now you suggested the Ehrenfelser, mm -hmm. but I'm leaning towards Pinot Noir, so I think we're just gonna do a bit of a taste off. Okay. And uh, the beautiful thing about, the beautiful thing about matching food and wine is nobody's right, nobody's wrong, it's all subjective. So this is a 100% Pinot Noir, uh, bubbly. And the, the reason I picked the bubbly for the salmon is because it has some acidity and it's light and it's fresh, so it won't overpower anything. Um, and at the same time, it still has some of those red forest floor uh, flavors. There's some red currant, there's some raspberry, some strawberry notes. We use the cherry. Should, that's my thought, is it, it should work really well. So I'm pouring this down the side of the glass just because it took a long time to get all these bubbles in this bottle. And if you just, uh, if you do one of these where you pour it straight up, uh, you lose a lot of bubbles. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, Eric. So, mm. light, fresh, crisp. It's gonna work. Yeah, let's try some of this. Okay, let's attack. Okay, so I'm gonna try some of the salmon first. I'm gonna yeah. destroy your model here. That's fine. But food and wine pairing, to know if it really worked from my perspective, is that put it in there and just see what it does. Does the wine dominate? Does the food dominate? And when you're chewing them up, you know, the, the, the two parts should make it taste better than just one alone. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the idea behind it. One of the reasons I chose Pinot, Jesse, is just Pinot is one of those great red wines that crosses all boundaries. It's beautiful as a bubbly. I got it here as a table wine too. Thanks for pour some of that. Get it going. Um, Pinot Noir because uh, you can actually serve Pinot Noir chilled and it still tastes good. A lot of red wines, if you pour them chilled, they're, they're yeah. too acidic and they're too bitter and they're too tart. But Pinot Noir and Gamay is another one that would cross those boundaries. And that's why I chose it because you can, it's so versatile and it's one of the few one of the few red wines that really goes well with fish, because it won't dominate the fish. Often, if you've tried to put a, a Zinfandel here or a Cap Sauv with this fish, it, that, that's all you would taste. Like, that's all that would be in your mouth in five minutes, one minute, two minutes, it would just dominate the, the dish. So the idea, is, from my perspective anyways, is to try to match the weightiness of it, and the, so that's, that's the theory behind it anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, try that one. That worked. Mm -hmm. So there's two wines that work. And that's the beauty of it. There's going to be a lot more. <laughs> so, now this is Chef Jess's choice is the uh, Summerhill Ehrenfelser. And this is, uh, in the wine world, this would be an interesting choice because this, this wine has some residual sugar, which means it's, it's not dry. But we, we around here would call it positively wet. Um, it's, but the apricot notes, it's a, a lot of fruit flavors, a lot of apricot, a lot of gooseberry. So this should be a lot of fun to try. Yeah. 
with this dish. And so for all you wine snobs out there that are probably, you know, like puckering up because uh, we got a sweet wine with a, uh, with a salmon, try it. Yeah. <laughs> and then make sure you get a raisin in there too. Wow. Oh, that's interesting. It's sublime, hey? It's like it goes from something so aggressive to... And it really changes it. changes both of them It's in a really neat way. Mm -hmm. Like you, you start out with one flavor and then the flavors start to change. So the main difference between the wines, from my perspective, is now this one with the Armfelser, and you could use a Gewürztraminer, it'd be the same sort of idea that had some residual sugar to it, um, or unfermented, you know, it's the unfermented great part of the juice that's still in the wine, so it has some natural um, sweetness to it. It really turns this dish into something very festive, you know? It takes it away from the, the very serious side, and there's a lot of flavor in the glass, and there's a lot of flavor on the dish, so they're really having a lot of fun together. And I just had some kale in the potato. That was working really well. And if you take the Pinot Noir, it, it's, it expresses the whole dish completely differently, but also beautifully, but off on a whole other direction. It's like, you know, if you got the, you know, the business suit on, or you got the beach shorts on. And it's exactly. just a it's, a, it's a very different character and flavor to it. It's really, really interesting. And there's no wrong or right to it. It's a spectrum thing, right? And you got contrast, compliment, and then fun, right? Mm. So Martin, you gotta come over here and try some of this. Get on in here before it's completely destroyed. <laughs> no, it's destroyed, but still tastes good.